Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Doorstep History. The show that brings to light all of the local history that's right on your doorstep. A new guide to an historic area of Birmingham has been published. Dig Digbeth is the brainchild of Andy Munro and Anna Gibson. Norma met Andy for a stroll around Digbeth. So this is Andy. Andy's mainly been responsible for researching the guide, so you found it interesting? It's been an absolute fascinating exercise. I'm a brummy brawn and bred, but there's so much I didn't know about Digbeth, and it really is a fascinating area historically and to the present day with all its creative businesses. So it's right. been a great exercise. Okay, so can we go and have a look around then, Tuba? Let's go. First stop is a pub. We've got some deeds that go back to at least 1775, and everything's documented since then in all this paperwork. It was taken over by Ansells in 1901 um, and before that it was, a, it was just called a beer house and it would have been just the two rooms um, at this end of the pub that were the pub at that time. Um, so the other, what is now the big room, uh, would have been added perhaps in the 20s or 30s. There were no roads at the time, so it says on the road that is going to be Alcester Street, on the road that's going to be Warwick, Warwick Street, on the road that's going to be Bradford Street. Uh, and it actually gives the measurements that the road was going to be. And This area has got artesian wells, so the old crown would have had one. Um, Ansell's Brewery that was had its own water, had its own well, and so did HB Source. Anyway, she was sweeping. They'd just put a piece of wood over the top of it, and she said she'd been standing on it, and it was fine. But this child came in, and it just gave way, and he fell in, and they couldn't get him out, so he oh drowned. Oh, my goodness. Did they have the well to, to make the beer as well? Was it anything to do with the beer they making? They probably or, did yeah. at the time, but when Ansells took it over, obviously that wasn't the case. No, it was no so. longer a beer house. It became part of Ansell's yeah. estate of, uh, of um, pubs. Digbeth is really well known for its viaducts, and behind me you can see one viaduct which is in use, which is the Snow Hill line to Paddington, and nearest to me is a disused railway line which is over 160 years old. It was originally going to link London Paddington with Birmingham New Street. It was a Great Western Railway line, but unfortunately it was never finished and now it's just disused. There have been plans to turn it into a sky park and all sorts of things. Nothing's happened to yet, yet but hopefully it will because it would be a great facility. We're here at Faisley Studios, which is part of the Custard Factory complex. This was refurbished about six years ago. It used to be a Unitarian uh, chapel and Sunday school, lovingly restored, and now home to over 40 creative businesses and uh, a very popular uh, venue for weddings. So great refurbishment. The River Ray and the canal were really important to early Digbeth. And I wonder what kind of heritage there is still on the canal side. Well, underneath the canal here is the River Ray. Uh, it's a wonderful scenic spot actually, almost like an area of outstanding natural beauty. I'd go that far. In the winter, of course, this river floods, becomes a bit of a raging torrent. And there have been plans actually to raise the River Ray because it could be a real asset to the area. But at the moment, the River Ray is a good natural marker between the areas of Digbeth and Derrit End, um, which has been an historic division over the years. Behind me is the uh, banana warehouse and ships used to, or, or canal boats used to come up the uh, Grand Union Canal, packed full of bananas and uh, they were stored here and it was a warehouse owned by Geest, which was a household name certainly years ago in the world of bananas. Behind me is the Bond warehouse, another fantastic industrial building converted for managed workspace. Lots of events are held there as well. The, the building as it's often the name, used to be a bonded warehouse where lots of valuable goods were stored, whiskey and the like. So a very famous building in part, as part of Birmingham's industrial heritage. As a bonded warehouse, the products would have an excise duty on them and that's why they'd have to be stored there. Behind me is the headquarters, the original Taifu Tea Company. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but uh, it was founded by a Brummie in, I think, 1903. 
and the tea used to be brought up by canal to this, uh, the back of this building. Uh, unfortunately now Thai food tea have moved on up to Mer Merseyside but it still remains very much a, a brummy thing really as an iconic name. We're here in the internationally uh, recognised uh, custard factory, home of uh, Alfie Bird, I believe, in, in his time. Yes, uh, uh, Andy, it's a, it's a strange story with uh, custard. Uh, at the time, this building and these premises were all owned by Alfred Birds. Uh, they were producing gallons and gallons and gallons of custard. Um, infamous brand throughout the world. Uh, left here in the 50s, we bought the building in the late 90s um, and we're in a position now where instead of a thousand people being employed making custard, there's about 2,000 people employed mainly within the creative industries based here. Our focus is on workspace, so the majority of our spaces are small to medium sized companies. What we want in the future is a working community, a working community of thousands of young businesses. It's mainly at the moment in digital media. 12 years ago, the building behind us, we put in super fast broadband connections, university uh, quality, and gave it away with the studios. We're trying to get the mix right, and we're trying to get the, the idea that you can do something slightly different down here um, and it's beginning to happen again so the, it feels right, Birmingham feels right, Birmingham feels as if it's got its message out there um, so bring on the next five, ten years because I do really think more companies allows more activity, allows more interaction and business makes business and yeah. I think Digbeth has been you know, historically linked with the River Ray, its founding fathers based here, the oldest pub based here. There's a sense that Birmingham's identity is based in Digbeth. Absolutely. And, and I, I really believe that we, what we're doing is not contrary to that, but actually enhances that. So. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next 10 years. So the future's bright, the future's yellow, in custard <laughs> terms. Yeah. Absolutely, Andy. Thank you. Right, we're here at the Old Crown, which is Birmingham's oldest secular building. And we've got a Kieran here, who's the landlord. Kieran, tell me a little bit about the history of the place. Uh, okay, so the building dates back to uh, 1368. I think that's the actual date that there was a, an inn started here. but. The actual building that we see behind us was built in the 1450s, so uh, still quite, quite old. old. Yeah, um, it's been everything from uh, a butcher's to an off license to a, um, a manor house to everything in between in its time here. So um, it's had a lot of uses, uh, but today it's. Uh, it and you know, all the half timbered facade on the front, is that, does that date back from the 15th century as well? The um, building was refurbed in the early 90s, so they kept as much as they could. So, right. Uh, it, and they did such a good job that you can't really tell the difference, but for someone with a keen eye, you'd be able to see which is the original and which, which part was the refurbished. But they did try and keep as much as possible. Now this area is interesting because it was the Italian Quarter and of course we always associate Digbeth with the Irish and the Irish Quarter and we'll be talking about that in a future programme. Now before we go, let's just have a quick word with Anna who co-wrote the guide. Well, it's, uh, the guide is an informative publication that will introduce visitors and uh, the people that live in Birmingham and surrounding areas to this wonderfully creative area that has a rich heritage that they can all be proud of. Well, the aim is to encourage footfall into this area. Um, that I think people will be extremely surprised at what there is here. It's so vibrant and 
interesting, uh, a real hidden gem of the city of Birmingham. We'll be back after the break to find out about more history on your doorstep.